I'll be explaining how our machine works mechanically. The judge will pick up one of our many pieces here. It will either be a pipe, a dowel, or a metal nut. They will then place it here on our, our conveyor belt. The conveyor belt will then move, moving the gyroscopic sensor here, telling us if it is the dowel, the nut, or the pipe. Then it will move towards the color sensor, where it will tell us if it's green or red. Then, color sensor conveyor belt will push it onto our trolley here, where it will fall neatly into our base, and then it will move forwards and backwards according to what the machine tells it to do. The ultrasonic sensor here is one of the safety precautions. Um, if anybody gets too close to it, the whole thing will cease to work, stopping completely. Now we're going to move it 100 degrees forward. No. 100 degrees is a little too far back. A little too far. So we've concluded that it's between 50 and 100. Alright, I'd say try 85. Okay, the math is wrong. Well, I mean, I did carry the extra 5. I can, okay, so now I'm going to use um, initiative and move it back to 5. So it goes down to 85 degrees. Um, my... my... My better judgment is telling you that the momentum it takes to overcome static friction is not going to yield the same result, but okay. We're just going to cut that whole part of the video. Unless he's right. Oh, I thought you were only going back five degrees. <laughs> <laughs> well then, we realized what happened to static friction. <clears throat> so you said 85? I almost put 150. Okay. Going forward six, everything in place. Did you just write 85 in there now? No, I, I, I've done that. How's that? So that's right on. I, I'd say that's right on. As okay. close as you're going to get. Ready? I don't know, I'd move it forward first and then do double 85 because if that's how it would be doing it in the actual program, and like I said, the static friction on this thing is not consistent. Sure. Move it back, 85. <clears throat> Looking good. You got her, Otter. At 130? Yeah. Alright, so this is a breakdown of our robot's program. It starts here, and then we initialize our first variable to determine whether the color is green. It moves through with an initial rotation to move it up to our gyroscopic sensor, as Jacob explained. It resets the gyroscopic sensor to zero degrees, so there are no misconceptions on our math and logic later on. And then the splits, going over to this line, and it comes down, we does some gyroscopic reporting at the first angle, whatever the next angle is, and then it proceeds through a loop, which I'll describe later. And then it wait, parallel to that, it waits five seconds and moves forward through the gyroscopic sensor moving the blade as far as the perspective block would go. That then continues to display whatever angle it records, waits for five seconds, and then checks to see if it is green or red. If it is green, it sets the display to green, tells us that it's green. If it's not, it sets the display to red, and says red, and it waits another five seconds before it moves another 130 degrees to go over to our brain operation part of the robot, where it then decides what box it needs to go into, what color it is, and which way it needs to rotate to do so. We have used an array here to hold the values on the degrees, as well as which way our drop box needs to rotate to deliver the little cube, a cube dowel, and the loop this returns which type of block it is, being either a metal connector, a pipe, or the dowel, and each one has a respective degrees it needs to travel to get to its uh, box. Then we also have, parallel to all, all this is going on, uh, a loop that is constantly checking to see if there's anything in the check, in the ultrasonic sensor, and if so, it will stop the program and wait for it to be reset by the user. 